Hi, I'm Vita Clocky with VitasCollectibles.com and I'm here today to talk about brushes uh, and the difference in brushes, the natural hair, the synthetic, and the blends and tell you which ones work better for me in my porcelain art. Uh, to start, I will show you 100% natural brush and this is brand new it also it has um, sizing in it so it's stiff the factories put sizing in to keep them straight during the shipping here is 100% synthetic brush this is all man-made these brushes I use more for texturing and for wiping out most of my painting is done with the Aquaflows. Those are a blend of natural hair and synthetic together. And the reason I like them is so, so well is because they have a good body and they hold a lot of paint. And yet they smooth the paint and they don't lose brush hairs like the 100% natural hair brushes do. When your brushes come, like I said, they have uh, a sizing in them. And that sizing has to be rinsed out. Now, this is a brand new brush, and so I am going to put it in my brush cleaner. It's just an odorless brush cleaner. And I'm just going to rinse out that sizing gently. And as you can see, that brush is still stiff. It needs to be conditioned. And I notice a lot of classes that I teach. Um, the students have problems with their brushes splaying out and most of that is those brushes have not been trained and they have not been conditioned if you look at one of my uh, brushes that have been trained I know the minute I pick this brush up that this is the direction it should go because this Aquaflow brush has been trained and I'll show you how to how I train those brushes after the sizing is rinsed out I go into an open medium, and in this case it's just mineral oil, and put it on a tile, and lay that brush into that mineral oil, and push, 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 push up the oil into the ferrule gently, and wiggle that brush around. And when brushes are new, you need to stop and do this conditioning several times throughout the day as you're painting. One thing you never, never do is bend a brush on its ferrule completely because that you're looking for trouble. You're um, going to lose hairs that way. I think I need a little bit more oil here. Now I use the Aquaflows for um, most all of my painting because I like, like I said, how they hold the paint and spread the paint and yet they soften the paint. So I'll just gently push this out. And I usually train my brushes lettering side up. It really doesn't matter, but um, you need to be consistent with that. So every time you're painting with it, check and see that the lettering side is up if that's the way you wish to train them and pretty soon your brush will be laying just like this and this edge is what's going to give you a nice smooth touch with your china paint when you're applying the the paint onto your porcelain now when I use the hundred percent natural hair brushes, I usually use them just at the end of my painting to gently, gently soften if I need just a real soft, soft look. But for my applications and the majority of my painting, I do use the Aquaflows. Now the synthetic brushes have their place too in China painting. Um, I use the synthetic brushes to wipe out 
to do textures like in trees and grasses and those type of things. And I also use this uh, synthetic angle brush for applying resist because it allows you to get in the corners and do some nice sharp edges when you're trying to get a good crisp edge on your resist. So there's a place for all the brushes. Um, you have to find what works best for you. Um, another thing I have noticed, um, depending on your painting medium that you have used, uh, a lot of the painters have trouble with no matter how much they're conditioning or what they're doing to clean their brush, it's not working. Um, and I have a brush here that's got a little bit of a buildup down by the ferrule. I can tell it's getting kind of thick. Uh, I may have used it for painting with Copaiba, and that will build up in your ferrule. Uh, I have started using this product. It's a um, Windsor Newton Brush Restorer, and it if you can't resurrect a brush with anything, this will work. What I do is I have a little old pot that I keep the um, Restorer in. And this is the old brush. Oh, yeah, that's the old brush. I'm going to work in that restore and let it soak in there quite well. And this little cover has a little handle on it. So I just hook this in that handle and I let it set overnight. The next morning I go back and, and swish it out again in the restore. and dry it and then I take it and wash it with soap and water and that residue will lift out of the ferrule and if this restorer doesn't work I'd say maybe it's just time to throw your brush away but after the restorer again um, I would go back into my conditioner which is my open medium um, like I said mineral oil recondition that brush again just like you should do every day when you are done with your china painting. I usually swish real quick in my brush cleaner and I recondition in my oil and reshape that brush and put them away in a nice safe place in a nice brush holder where they won't touch or bend because once uh, the uh, hairs are bent and damaged, it's pretty hard to get that brush straightened out. So you're better off to find a good, nice uh, box to store those in or a stand-up uh, brush container. So that's all I have for you for brush conditioning and uh, training. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at vitascollectibles.com on my website or vitaclocky at gmail.com.